In this video, we're going to properly define pi and use this definition to prove four famous formulae involving pi. Furthermore, we're going to do this by using differentiation and integration from calculus. We can first consider a circle with a radius 1. We are interested in finding what is the area enclosed by this circle. To make things simpler, let's look at the top right portion of the circle, also known as the first quadrant. Let's approximate this area using a bunch of rectangles. Each of these rectangles is given by a height and a width. And we're trying to add up the total area, which is taking the height multiplied by the width and summing them up. This would be a really crude approximation of our area, but as we use more and more and more rectangles, we are very gradually going to approach the actual area being enclosed. Taking infinitely many is what we mean by taking the integral of the function. Furthermore, since this area is replicated, the total area enclosed by the circle is 4 times of the integral. But that raises the question, what exactly is this function f of x? What expression are we working with? Well, if we place a point on the unit circle, its x-coordinate is given by x, its y-coordinate is given by y. As this point travels around the circle, since this circle has a radius of 1, by Pythagoras' theorem, we get x squared plus y squared equals to 1. And this is the expression for f of x. This expression more precisely is what we are integrating from 0 to 1, followed by a multiplication of 4. And in fact, pi is defined as the area of a circle with radius 1. Now let's consider a circle with general radius r. Since these are similar objects, the ratio of the areas is the square of the ratios of the lengths. And doing a bit of algebra gives us a of 1 times r squared. But a of 1 is by definition the area of a unit circle, which equals pi. This gives us the formula for the area of a general circle with radius r. It is pi r squared. But similarly, we can try to compute the circumference of the circle, which roughly speaking is the amount of line needed in order to traverse around the circle. Let's first consider a circle with radius r and increase it ever so slightly. The circumference and the delta r sort of constitutes the dimensions of a curved rectangle. This means it approximates the area of this particular curved region. We can divide out delta r on both sides and let delta r approach 0 in the limit. As we do that, the region starts to approximate the actual circumference. But this is nothing more than the derivative of the area with respect to r. But the area of a circle is pi r squared. To take derivatives, we can pull out the constant pi and differentiate r squared to get 2 times r. This simplifies to the circumference of a circle formula 2 pi r. But what if we took the circle and put it on its side and drag it across the x-axis? How much space does that object actually contain? We can think of it as the base of the circle multiplied by the height of the cylinder. In fact, that is precisely what we mean by the volume of the cylinder pi r squared times h. 
If instead, however, our object starts at a single point and slowly increases in the base as we increase the value of x, we obtain a cone with the base radius r and height h. The slanted height is given by an equation and what we're going to do is add up a bunch of cylinders. As we take more and more and more cylinders, we approach the actual volume given by the integral. We can simplify this integral with a bit of algebra and pull out the constant pi r squared over h. We can evaluate the integral in x as h cubed over 3. For details, check out the document in the description box below. Doing some algebra gives us 1 third times pi r squared h. This is the volume of a cone with base radius r and height h. But what about a three-dimensional circle known as a sphere? How much space or how much volume does that contain? With some effort, you might figure out that the equation of the curve is the square root of r squared minus x squared, and what we're going to do is add up a bunch of cylinders. As we add up more and more cylinders, we obtain an integral. I'll let you guys check that this integral evaluates to the famous formula 4 3rd pi r cubed. This is the volume of a sphere. But just like the circumference, what is the surface area of a sphere? We can start with a sphere with radius r and increase it by a little bit. This additional space can be approximated by the surface area times the increment in the radius. This approximates the change in the volume. Dividing out the change in r, we obtain an approximation for the surface area. As we let the change in r approach zero, we're going to obtain the actual surface area. But the right-hand side is simply the derivative of the volume of the sphere. We can plug in the formula for the volume of a sphere, and I'll let you guys check that differentiating this expression really does give us 4 pi r squared, which is the famous formula for the surface area of a sphere. There are more functions that you need to know in high school in the video here.